Hey guys, Get Level here, and today I'm gonna show you how to customize your Twitch channel, but I'm also gonna give you all my tips and tricks and techniques in order to optimize your channel. I'm gonna go in depth into the reasoning behind every single decision on your Twitch customization. You wanna know what types of avatars gets more clicks? You wanna know what information to put on your offline image? You wanna know why is the banner so important? You wanna know in which order should you put your panels? Well, keep watching. So hi, I have my camera kind of transparent just in case I go uh, over something uh, bottom left and I'm covering it so you'll still be able to see it. We're here on my Twitch page. This is my bot page. Keep in mind in this video, I'm going to be um, referring to other videos that I've made that are more in depth when it comes to specific things, right? So let's start. As you can see, uh, this is my bot channel. It's all over the place. Uh, it's a channel that I use when I'm testing stuff and when I'm creating uh, tutorials, so this is perfect. So the first thing to know, if you're watching this video and then at this point you're like, oh my God, wait a second, I'm gonna watch a video on how to customize my Twitch channel, but I, I'm not an artist, I don't use Photoshop, I don't have any money to pay an artist, do not fear. If you go to gumroad.com slash get level, you will see that I have a bunch of free overlay packs and they include avatar banners, panels, offline image on top of overlays and camera overlays and all of that. So there's really, really no excuse as a smaller streamer or a beginner to not have a good looking front page basically. And that's the goal behind it all. It's to have beginners be able to have a good looking page without the oh i'm not good with photoshop or i don't have any money excuse as you can see they're not all free but those that are not free are like 99 cents they're literally cheaper than water so for example for this fortnite pack it's animated you get over a hundred files for 99 cents that's less than a cent per file try asking an artist to do anything for less than a cent Anyway, so what we're going to be using for an example at this moment is going to be the latest Wraith Apex Legends free Twitch overlay pack. That's on gumroad.com slash get level. It's this one. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, there might be other new overlays, but this is the one we're going to be using as an example. So what is the first thing you need to think about when you are setting up your Twitch channel design is your color scheme. Obviously, I made a video about that, a whole video about it, where I explain why it's important and how it will help you in the long run. So the key here is to get everything to match, to find a color palette or color scheme, whatever you want to call it, and to embed that into everything you pretty much display so that people will assimilate this color palette with you and your personality and your stream and your content. For example, right now we have a very colorful offline image and then we have this green. This is from a different pack. This is not a good look for a viewer. The human brain is a pattern detecting machine. So when everything matches perfectly, it somehow is very satisfying to the average human being. So let's start uploading stuff. So in order to access your banner, you have to click on your name while you're in your page. Also, you make sure that you are logged in with the right account. And when you hover here, you can just click and update the, the banner. Same thing for the profile image, the avatar, if you will. But if that is not working for you, you can always go to settings and it's the first thing you can also update from your settings here. So you click top right, you go to settings and then you can come back to channel. So let's go from top to bottom, okay? The banner, what is important about the banner? I'm gonna upload the Wraith pack uh, banner. There's a pigeon outside my window. Okay, as you can see, this is coming from the pack, so it's not customized, but what is important about the banner? On top of having, well, the same color as the rest of your overlay packs. What you need to know is that your banner is the only thing that will appear aside your avatar when users are on mobile, when they're using their phones to watch your stream or to watch streams in general. So if you don't have a banner, it will look super empty for a mobile user. There is a ton of mobile users out there, so you really need to cover that ground. When it comes to the information, there will be some sort of dark layer overlaid on top of it when people are on your profile on mobile. So you don't want to put too much information there, but mostly you really, really want to show your colors. Now, if you were to put some information like social media or anything, you would want that to be in towards the middle and slightly up top. Keeping in mind that that's where your avatar will be, and then your follower number, your view count, and then your bio. So it's completely fine to not put anything when it comes to information in your banner. 
let's move on to the avatar. And when it comes to the avatar, there is one simple tip that you will find throughout the whole internet. As I said before, the human brain is a pattern detecting machine. If there's one thing that the human brain likes to detect more than, than just random patterns is the human face. This is why you will find faces in thumbnails. If you check out your favorite YouTuber and check out their thumbnails, you will most likely see a lot of faces. PewDiePie, Philip DeFranco, anyone who has a large following, there's a reason why there, there are faces in thumbnails. I'm gonna open up a incognito YouTube page and I'm gonna click on trending. So face, face. This guy has 1 million views. Face, 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 face. Oh, this is football, doesn't count. Face, 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 face. Now from the Wraith pack, what you get is not, it's not a face. You should be using your face. But as I said, since you want everything to still match your color scheme, the avatar is actually a template that you can drag and drop on a picture of your face. So I have Photoshop open right now. I'm just gonna show you how easy it is. I'm just creating a new file that's gonna be a thousand by a thousand pixels. I'm gonna drag and drop a picture of my face. I'm gonna scale it to size. Keeping in mind that the avatar on Twitch is very, very small right now. So you really need to zoom in in order for people to recognize what they're looking at. Now I'm gonna grab the avatar two from the overlay pack, drop it, press enter, and I'm done. Now I can save as and upload it to Twitch. Sometimes you get that error, upload timeout, please try again. You can just close it and refresh. Oh look, they lied to us. <laughs> And now it's up there. So that's the most important information about avatars. It needs to be uh, cropped in a way that you can still understand what you're looking at. I've seen people with logos, with text and stuff like that. That's just unreadable. It's, it's useless if you put something that people cannot see. It just brings confusion and usually the human brain is not happy with that. So try to put a human face, but also somehow try to integrate your color scheme into the profile picture. Since the overlay pack is mostly purple, I could also just add a purple um, filter in Photoshop on the whole profile picture. If you do decide to go with a logo, same thing, really crop it or just scale it up in order for people to understand what they're looking at, but mostly really, really show the colors. Okay, let's talk about the offline image. Where do I change the offline image? Cause you can't change it from here. So where do you find it? It used to be in settings, but now it moved to the dashboard. And here to the left, you can click on settings channel and you'll find video player banner right here. If you scroll down So click update, it says upload timeout. I'm going to refresh It actually updated. Okay. Let's go back to the channel. Okay. So this is sort of a template because it's coming from an overlay pack, but let me list all the information that you actually want to show on your offline image and how important it is. Now I've never streamed from this channel, so I don't have any VODs, but something that you need to keep in mind is that when you go on a channel and it's offline, Twitch will often give you suggestions to watch VODs and those suggestions will show up top right. And in top left, it will ask you if you want notification. Let me try to see if I can find an example. So this is the Overwatch Contenders channel. As you can see here, top left, we have the notification suggestion right there. And this is something that you need to take into account when you're creating your offline image or when you're just customizing it. If you were to put, let's say social media links top left, then they wouldn't be visible. Another thing to take into account when designing offline images is that Twitch also adds uh, a small gradient on top, but also a bigger one at the bottom for the video player, basically. So if you put any information all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top, it might be uh, obscured by those gradients. This is my good friend Viking Trash. I actually made this offline image for her. And as you can see, um, in the middle, you'll see the logo, you'll see the name of the stream, but most importantly, you need offline to actually be written and big. Offline should be the biggest thing that shows up on your offline image. Now you might be thinking, why? If someone's on Twitch, they can understand, they can just click and see that I'm not live. The problem is that if you think like that, then if someone clicks on your link to support you, for example, I don't know, you post it on your personal Facebook and someone who has never been to Twitch, they won't understand that you're offline. So you don't know how people who have never been to Twitch think. So you really want to to make it clear that you are currently offline, especially when there's a play button right there, even though you're offline, that might throw them off. What happens if you click on it? That literally just gave me a black screen. <laughs> 
Okay, so your offline image is pretty much your front page. It's it's the first page. It's the first thing people are going to see if they click on your link while you're offline. So the two graphic design elements people will see when they click on your link while you're offline is your avatar and then your offline image. So from there, you want to share as much information as possible while keeping everything super clean. You really want them to know that you're not live right now and then this is where you could also slip in some social media links or your schedule to let them know oh i'm not live right now but this is when you can catch me but keep it clean keep it clear off the top left top right extreme bottom or extreme top keep it in the middle so left side right side as i showed you with the viking trash channel really small you can put some social media links you don't need to type the whole uh, social media name you don't need to type facebook if you put the little blue logo people understand that it's facebook even old people do <laughs> when it comes to schedules you don't need to type the full days like mondays if you type m-o-n like mon people understand that you mean monday you don't need to state the days that you're off i've seen people do that where they type every single day of the week and then they put oh this day i'm off this day i'm resting People understand that if the, the days don't figure in the schedule, that means you don't stream during those days. Optimize your design. As I said, all that extra information should be very, very small compared to the currently offline or I'm not live right now. Obviously, this is where you really, really need to show uh, the main colors of your color scheme. Here you'll have the purple and then the dark gray. If you have a good photo of yourself, it's also good. Honestly, like the... As I said, the human brain loves the human face, so if you can plaster your face all over, it's good. But if you don't want to, that's completely fine. But there are no excuses to not have your main colors show up on your offline image. Because this is where people will base their first impression. Alright, now let's talk about the panels. How to edit them. If you're logged in with your right account and you're, you're on your own channel, click edit panels. And from there, you can add panels. It will ask you what kind of panels, if it's text and image, click text and image. Um, something that I've seen people do a lot is type a title. Basically, they will type about me and then also upload an image that says about me. When you're uploading pictures, do not crop them, especially if they're coming from my packs. If your panels look weird, I don't want people saying, oh, that's bad graphic design because you crop them. Don't crop them. <laughs> click done. And basically what that does, if you type the title and also upload an image that has the title in it, I'm going to turn off the edit. It's going to look like that. This is extra information that looks really bad. <laughs> There's no reason why you should have a title and an image that says the same thing as the title. It looks so, so bad. It looks so amateur and people usually hate it. Now, the cool thing is that you don't need to add a title. You can just delete this and then submit. Just adding an image will work. See? way better so let's upload a couple of panels keep in mind that if you want to move the panels you can just click and then just drag them okay so now we uploaded our panels obviously the pattern thing you want to keep uh, an even number you want to make everything match as much as you can it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, symmetrical but try so first thing when it comes to text because you're gonna need some text especially for the about panel you're gonna type a bunch of text and basically it's gonna show up underneath it which is going to throw off our, our, our symmetrical thing there you go now when you here you can see it says description supports markdown click on this and read this this is very important because this is how you format your paragraph this is where you can add links inside your text clickable links this is where you can make stuff bold you can make stuff bigger and all of that you can add lists and and it's very important that you read this page and that you understand it if you're going to write a paragraph. Now, talking about paragraph, the About Me panel is the most important panel. I'm going to talk to you about the order of panels and which order should your panels be. But the About panel, when you're talking about yourself, something I've seen a lot by doing stream reviews is that some people will introduce themselves as a as a list form, like, uh, like name, this, favorite color, this. Uh, games I play this never introduce yourself as if you were a robot not only the about panel is the most important panel but this is where you have the chance to establish a human connection with whoever is reading it this is where you want to 
introduce yourself as human as possible. Think about it like this. If I introduce myself by saying name, get level, age 28, favorite pastime, doing YouTube and Twitch. Compared to, hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Gal Level and I'm a passionate YouTuber and Twitch streamer. The second one is going to be more welcoming. It's going to feel more human. And by the end of the paragraph, when you really give all the information you want to give about yourself, people will feel a certain bond, a certain connection with you that will drive them to want to learn more about you, but they will feel like they, they just read and they know a part of you now. And this is what you want. If you introduce yourself as if you were a robot, I was like, oh, where's Sarah Connor? <laughs> Name Terminator. It doesn't establish any form of human connection at all. Okay, I'm gonna delete this, make sure everything looks good. Now let's talk about the order. In general, the, the average human being will read from left to right, from top to bottom. Now this is why you need to push. Basically, if you have a panel that is top left, that means that this panel should be the most important panel. It should be the thing that people are most likely looking for when they scroll down to look at your panels and usually when people scroll down look at your panels that means they want to learn more about you so the about me should be absolutely should be the first panel on every twitch channel if i click on your link and you're not online and it's my first time watching your twitch channel and i scroll down and for example i see that discord is your first panel now I, not, now I need to look for your about me panel because I'm not going to join your Discord if I have no idea who you are. Maybe in your about me section, you're going to say stuff that's going to make me realize that we don't have anything in common and I don't want to join your Discord. So why should you have your Discord panel uh, first? Even worse is if you have your donate panel first. I'm not going to donate to you if I don't even know what to call you if I don't know anything about you. So introduce yourself and in an order of things, you can let people support you. You can let people join your social media and all of that. So what I generally advise is top left has to be the about me panel. There's no questions about it. There's nothing more important than introducing yourself. Then if you have something that is important, such as if you're like an active YouTuber, but you also stream on Twitch, you would want your YouTube channel to be the second panel. Basically, whatever you have to promote, that has to be on your second uh, panel. If you don't have anything to promote, you can put your schedule, for example, imp important information about the stream. And then I generally advise to have the donate panel top right, because if someone has this impulse where they really want to support you and they really want to do a gesture, it's really good to not have them scroll by and have to read all of your panels to find it. So if I want to scroll to know more about you, it's the first panel. If I want to scroll to donate, it's the third panel, but it's on top, so that's fine. For example, right now we have Discord. Discord is, is sort of like a community platform. I wouldn't put it on top here. It's usually about me, important information, donate, and then important information in order. Your social media usually should be last, in case you have affiliate links, I see people will use like Fade Grips, uh, Player One Coffee, uh, or even Streamlabs OBS affiliate links. That should be all the way to the bottom. Why? Because most likely your viewers really don't care. People are rarely scrolling down your page to find your Fatal Grips affiliate code. So let mo let's move things around in a better order. So this is a pretty good uh, order. About me is the first panel, schedule, important information about your stream, donate if someone wants to do a, a generous gesture, and then rules to let people know, hey, those are my rules, this is how it goes here. Uh, specs, if that's something that people ask you a lot, I, I honestly just randomly uploaded those panels. So uh, depending on your stream, the, it's very personal basically which panels are gonna show up. Then Discord as a community platform, as in, oh, I have a following, this is where you can join to be part of us. And then merch, this is where you start advertising other content and hopefully make some money. Then YouTube and Twitter, that is if you're mostly like a Twitch streamer. If you are, if you have a very good YouTube and, and you upload frequently to your YouTube, obviously you would want your YouTube to be before merch. But yeah, depending on how active you are on those other platforms, they will, uh, they will shift like from top to bottom when it comes to the order of your panels. Anyways, when it comes to the links, uh, you don't need a link for your about 
panel you could just add promote anything because um i like it when link when images are clickable but it really doesn't matter what you link it to for the donation if you want to know how to get donations from paypal by clicking on this link uh, i have a video on that so i'm going to refer you to that and not go into it right now Basically, once you get your link, you can just add it here when it says image links to always test your link after you put them there. There's nothing worse than scrolling down to find someone's Twitter and then you click on the image and then it's it's not clickable or it's a broken link. So this is basically the thought process behind uh, the customization of a Twitch front page. Basically, it's really optimizing everything so that is clickable uh, for the avatar. If you link your Twitch on a site like Facebook, the automatically generated thumbnail is going to be your avatar. So you really want it to look nice and clean. Now, once you're live streaming, for example, in this pack, you're going to have stuff uh, like starting soon screen. This is a whole other subject that I already covered. If you want to know step by step how to how to make that happen with your broadcasting software, I have a video on that. But obviously you want the colors to still match. Those are the two camera overlays. That's an intermission screen. That's a labels bar. It's semi-transparent. Also with the panels, there's like 18 panels, including a blank one. So if you want to customize it yourself, any editing software, any image editing software or website will allow you to customize your own panel. Also, I always link to the custom font used. So if you're wondering what font did you use, I always link towards the font in the product description. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the mentality behind customizing a Twitch front page. If you guys have any more questions about specific parts of your customization, please leave them in the comment section below. If you guys have any more insight into why you should go with a certain type of uh, avatar, a banner, offline image or panel uh, compared to others, I would also love for you to leave that in the comment section below. For the Instagram shout out, I want to shout out that weird Helian. I hope that's how you pronounce it uh, for being active on my Instagram. If you want to shout out on the next video, all you have to do is follow me. It's at guile.level. So keep in mind that this video is mostly to show you that there could be a reasoning behind things that you upload to your front page to, to how you present your Twitch channel. That means that the things that I say in this video will not necessarily match everyone's channel, everyone's content and all of that. It's just an example. If you're a streamer that doesn't want to show your face, for example, well, you're not going to use your face as the avatar. If you're too young and your parents don't want you to handle money, well, you're not going to have a donate button. Or if you have, then it's going to be their PayPal account. Etc. Just like all of the advice videos, just try to take the advice and apply it to your situation. And if it doesn't match your situation, well, just just don't take the advice. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully you guys will come up with some tips and tricks too. I'm I'm really excited to read the comments on this one. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so so much for watching the video. Go out there, make me proud. Get level out.